There are a variety of groups all around the world really concerned about invasive species. It, it perhaps is one of the major environmental issues of the 21st century. And I think a unique feature of what our group is doing is we're trying to get this as a citizen science or what we call participatory sensing, that using sensors in the form of a cell phone to get an educated general public out there to help in these kinds of jobs. And one of the kinds of things we're very really interested in doing is mapping these distributions and looking at how dynamic they are. We know that some of these species are dramatically expanding their ranges. All these meandering creeks everywhere. There's a seepage all through these hills. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how much water? Really I can tell in my yard in the back hill where there's poison oak. That's been, it's got to be in its 50s now, but it's yeah. very folksy. Oh, okay. it's folksy. Kind of Tennessee or where it was used. Agriculture started, and that's where I think learned to be weeds evolutionarily. And then when they came here, they were. We were given phones that we were able to take with us into the field when we were doing our normal jobs. And since I am a botanist, I'm often surveying vegetation up in the mountains anyway. And so every time I came across a weed like Spanish broom, especially a new occurrence we didn't know about, all I'd have to do is take a photograph of it and it would automatically be linked to a GPS point and we wouldn't have to do any data entry. It doesn't even really slow us down. So we're able to document the occurrence and spread of these plants while we're doing our normal jobs. I will photograph it and then a pull down menu will come up that will ask me what type of plant it is. The cool thing about it is that it shows you where you're located whenever you take the photos, so then you can go to the map and see all the other flowers that are around that particular region as well. Okay. And then there's also some uh, Spanish prune, especially along uh, the road itself. Um, so uh, similar to the park where we were looking at uh, invasive plants, on campus we wanted to do something where we can explore the flora that exists uh, around our university. So we had students uh, go out into UCLA and take pictures of things that were blooming at the time. Uh, so we had an application that uh, the uh, students around campus could use and you can capture the actual photo. Um, capture a photo of uh, these uh, f uh, of flowers around campus. You uh, bring up the What's Invasive app on the, on the phone. A nice splash screen will come up uh, showing all the invasives that you should be on the lookout for. Then you can actually take a picture of the invasive. And you want to tag with uh, the type of invasive that it actually is. So they're, they're pretty, like, they get to the point, I guess, is the main thing. So. So there are one thing that we have find clients and find people who are interested and we develop a campaign for them, like for the National Park Service. But the real power of the technology is sort of like the web, that anybody can now go and set up their own website. And so this has that same potential, that anybody can go and create their own campaign, the side that is on the server, that's on the web, and what can get downloaded to the phone. Campus do it, because then yeah. they're more aware of what stuff that we do, and then hopefully yeah. they'll get into science and things like that. Speaks English really well, but I think she doesn't want to do something that she's taught me to do. <laughs>